In 2020, we made the huge decision to sell our home in the lower 48 and move north to Alaska to live a way of life free from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Join us here as we share our everyday adventures living free in Alaska. Just walking around the back of the house and we have a guest appearing in our backyard. Look at this guy. What's he doing here? Boy. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey big boy, how are you? What do you think? It's kinda of cold, isn't it? Yeah? What are you doing? You're okay. That kind of shows you how deep the snow is. It's up to his almost up to his belly. Whoa. Behind him, look at that. Amazing. Just munching on some of the tree branches there. They like the willows. For some reason, they like willow. Um, I think they sprout in the fall, and so there are little buds on them all winter long that they chew on. And there he goes into the neighbor's yard. Watch out, Larry and Sue. Here comes Mr. Moose. He didn't like me. Mm, oh, well, good chilly day. Uh, I believe our minimum low this morning was negative 31 degrees. Uh, I think this is the coldest on record since moving here that we have experienced on our property. So, yeah, we had that going for us. Just taking a walk out to get the garbage. Um, you now I'm just trying to help out with some extra chores because uh, Mr. Gary and his lovely injury it's like somehow some garbage in the road but uh oh that sounds horrible i'll uh catch up when we get back to the house okay put her down oh do you have a kickstand Okay, let's go outside. Oh, there's the kickstand. Okay, come on. Come on, go outside. Oh, you're, you're handling those much better. Oh, go outside, go potty. We got a little kickstand action going on. Come on, go potty. I didn't come out here for your enjoyment. And while she does her thing, I will put the phone up, but these poor temperatures with the dogs, even Spirit, you can tell she is not happy. I mean, below, 30 below, that's cold. And the chickens, they're actually tolerating this pretty well. They just stay inside and only go outside to eat and get water when they're hungry or thirsty. All right, I need to let her in and then go check on eggs.
Yeah, you did your business. Good girl. Come on. Let's go inside. Yeah, that's a little different than you're used to. <laughs> and she's saying, get him off me, Mom. Had to get a hat on. So I went and got my egg basket. Earlier today, we only had three eggs. But I'm not surprised. It is so cold. These poor birds, I tell you. But they're being pretty hardy. Oh, look at that. The hoarfrost is coming off the trees. <sighs> Gorgeous. All right. Oh, and look at that sunset. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, I can't sit here and stare at it too long. It's too cold. Okay, temperature check. 6.3 degrees. Earlier when I was in here, it was 4. So that is an improvement. Okay. So that's 6 for the day. And, oh, hi, Miss Peggy. What are you doing? Are you laying me an egg right now? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything underneath there? Not at the moment. This is my broody girl. Yeah. Are you laying me an egg? Do I need to come back in a little bit? Oh, if you can see, her feathers are super puffed up. And this is how she's staying warm. She just turned her backside to me. But uh, there's some more just hanging out. Hi, ladies. And there's everyone. They're just chilling, staying inside. Yep, it's a cold one, huh? So you can see all their feathers are all fluffed up and that's just retaining their heat. All right, another, as you can see their chicken door is pretty frosted over because it's metal. And out here, just another check. Whoops, yep. Today was negative 30 and they still have soft water. Again, winning at the game of chicken keeping. Okay, I'm going to take these three eggs, add them to the other three I got this morning, and uh, call it a win. Again, let's take a look at this beautiful sunset. So pretty. It's just now going down. <sighs> All right, it's cold. And uh, my chores are done for the evening. Just came in and it's currently negative 14.8, so negative 15 degrees. That's why I'm cold. What do you think, Spirit? Are you mad at the cold? Yeah, it's pretty bad, huh? Remember a while back, I said I was keeping track of all of our uh, chicken eggs every day. And for January, they produced a total of 267 eggs. Compared to December, was 287. So production was down about by only 20 eggs, which considering we've had two weeks of below zero temps, not too bad. And I have more cash flow flowing in from the neighbors. Well, oh, good morning. Well, afternoon or day, as it may be. Good day to you guys. Uh, welcome back. It's been a little bit since I've been out here outside taking care of chores. But uh, today I got a few things to take care of. 
and I'm going to bring you along with me as much as I can. Uh, we're currently sitting about 18 degrees below zero. As you can see, I'm bundled up a little bit more than normal. Uh, it's cold out here. We've been going through this extreme cold snap for uh, about two weeks now. We've had a couple temperatures in the negative 30 below overnight. Uh, 30, 32 below, zero uh, Fahrenheit. Those temperatures are all Fahrenheit, so that's, uh, that's very cold. And um, we haven't been above zero for, I don't know, four or five days now. So uh, definitely a uh, Arctic freeze right now. Um, but I've got a couple things to take care of. I've got some uh, batteries I need to tend to. You know, um, we have a, uh, we, we're on oil and I've got a trailer set up together oil and it's got a battery system in it. And these cold temperatures kind of mess with batteries a little bit. So I want to bring that trailer inside, warm it up. And then, uh, and then, then I've also got the mission trainer back there behind me that I want to uh, move back to its original position, and so I can plug it in, and so those batteries will stay uh, more fully charged. Um, so I'm going to try to tackle that stuff today. It's uh, beautiful, sunny out. The sun's actually giving me a little bit of warmth. I can feel it. Um, so yeah, we'll get around here. After our last snowfall, we had about a foot of snow. Uh, our snow berms have grown quite a bit. Um, I'd say they're five feet tall at least around the perimeter of our driveway. And uh, uh, pretty deep too, five feet tall and probably they go back about 20 feet. So there's a lot of snow piled up back here in this backyard lot. Oh, wow. Yeah, sometime sooner than later, I need to take care of that. See, all that snow has fallen off our shelter logic and piled up between the trailer and a shelter logic. It's pressing on the side of the structure a little bit. Uh, not too much stress right now, but I can see the tarp is kind of tight up on top. And of course, got the snow right in front of the door. I need to get into there today, so I'll have to gain access to through that snow there. The side over here, I've been able to plow out. So as the snow has been able to push the snow back uh, further, but as you can see there, it's already, already starting to pile up too. So uh, we're starting to run out, run out of space to put snow. Kind of a crazy problem to have, isn't it? Oh, yeah, well, I've made it into the Shelter Logic uh, portable garage here, and this is where I have my uh, fuel trailer as well as. Uh, quite a few building supplies left over from the house and other projects and there's another uh, fuel cell posted up high there for um, ATVs and snow machines. Um, I haven't completed that project yet, haven't filled it up yet, uh, but I want to put a fuel filler handle on there and have that available for snow machines and ATVs. But right now I'm looking at my fuel trailer here, my uh, heating oil trailer, and I've got two batteries up in here. and. Initial uh, inspection leads me to believe that the batteries are still in good shape. They haven't frozen uh, with these cold temperatures. Um, so that tells me that there's a significant charge with them as well. Um, you know, if there isn't a full charge in batteries, they can freeze at, you know, negative 20, negative 30 degrees. And uh, well, that's where we've been, kind of been hanging out. So um, I'm actually going to take this trailer inside my uh, shop. And let her warm up a little bit, charge the batteries up, get the batteries nice and toasty warm, because I anticipate using this uh, in the next couple of days. All right, let's see if we can do this. gotta say that went pretty good able to back the trailer into the shop here nice and warm it'll get a chance to thaw out and I've got a battery charger right over here that I can throw on the batteries here to get them topped off for our uh, heating oil run now I've come across another situation with my wheeler here and it's plow uh, something I can fix um, <laughs> I just gotta get down underneath it 
down here underneath the wheeler, you can see I've got my plow mount right here. This hole, that hole is supposed to be over here, or lined up with this. So somehow I lost my pin. You can see on the other side over there, there's a pin holding that bracket up. And on this side, there's not. So I've got to find a new pin that goes through here and realign that setup. And then my plow will work just fine. If you can't find a pin, I have to go with a bolt and a lock nut. We'll see what we can do. Well, searching through the toolbox, I found this guy right here, that pin with a little bail on it. I don't see why that wouldn't work. I'm just not sure if that diameter is going to be the right size to fit through the hole. So uh, we're going to go figure that out right now. If not, it'll be a bolt because this is all I got. I guess I need to go to the hardware store and buy an assortment of different pins. You should always have something like this on hand as spares. I know I've got some other, others elsewhere. I just, I don't know. This is this will work, I think. We'll see. There it is. I got it. I think I got the hole aligned. You can kind of see through it now. Now just time to place the pin through the hole and uh, make sure that goes in there and put the bail around it. I want to put the bail around this direction. Oops. Looks like that's in there. I want to put the bail around the front side and thinking it might help protect something, uh, help protect it from the snow a little bit. There we go. So. There it is, all back in place. I got that new pin in there. It's gotta be a temporary pin because I stole it from somewhere else. So I'll have to find, have to go to the store and get some of the correct ones. But we're back in business. Winter time and actually just using your equipment in the winter time. It's always so tough on everything. You have to cont continually watch, monitor, look around, inspect um, everything, uh, every time you use it just to make sure you don't have broken parts and pieces. Um, and actually the plow was in good shape when I pulled it out of the garage. And at some point while I was just moving the snow from in front of that shelter logic, the pin fell out and then the plow started going all wonky on me. And uh, I knew there was a problem. So had to uh, grab the trailer and pull it into the shop here and get it all fixed up. So now we're ready to go back out. I want to remove some snow from around the front of the mission trailer, that bigger trailer. And, um, then we'll be able to move that trailer back into its normal spot so I can plug it into and get it charging. However, I do have to say, this four-wheeler, not sufficient to move the big mission trailer. 24 foot enclosed? Nope, not going to do it with the four-wheeler. I'll have to get Big Blue out and uh, hook her up and uh, reposition with that big Ram truck. All right, let's get the wheeler out there and start moving some more snow. Well, the snow's been cleared from in front of the mission trailer. Got a little snow pile right there. And uh, I'll have to push that back against the big snow pile. Finish clearing in front of the shelter logic. And I also cleaned up the rest of the driveway a little bit. It's always nice to kind of clean it up once in a while. And I also did down here where my heating oil tank is. You can see that gra gray cylinder back there. Kind of cleaned out the snow there a little bit. I did, I did plow it a couple of days ago after it snowed, but just came in here and cleaned up a little bit so it makes it easier to back the trailer in. And over here, I also cleaned up the area where the mission trailer is going to go. Right there along that big wall, tall wall. Kind of pulled the snow back out of there, so. You know, when there's snow on the ground, moving things around, you want to clean out from underneath them. My gosh, look how blue that sky is. Isn't that just something else? Wow. That's just beautiful.
walking around out here, look at the snow on our roof. I don't know, I'm guessing that's a good three feet up there. A little bit of a drift. Uh, the snow blow, the wind blows uh, from behind the other side of the house or so, so it kind of drifts the snow up there. But that's like three feet of snow. And uh, our roofs are engineered here specifically for that, to take this heavy, tall, deep snow load. So we shouldn't have a worry about it. But uh, it is always concerning, especially in that shop building. You know, there's a there's a uh, 40 foot wide span in there, supported by trusses only. There's no posts inside. So yeah, there's a lot of weight on that roof. But engineering, it's great. And even this little porch roof up here. There's some snow up there. Look at that. Yeah, that black is uh, about eight inches of black uh, trim and then all that snow above there. Wow. So quite a bit of snow around here. Gosh, look at that. Way up there is our Starlink and there's ice dripping off of it and snow covering the face. And we're still getting good service. Um, we could turn on the snow or the ice melt, snow melt feature, and that would clear the face off. Uh, we may do that here pretty soon because, you know, I never know. But yeah, we're still getting great service even with that bit of snow on there. That's amazing. Love Starlink. Well, there's where the mission trailer was. And panning over this way, Big Blue. And the trailer back where I prefer to store uh, store over the winter time, kind of out of the way of the backyard over, over there. I wanna go inside and see how the batteries are looking. In this compartment down here, well, <laughs> I got a power cord there, so I can't really tell what's going on here. I don't see any swollen batteries. They look to be in decent shape. They are not bulging. There's no liquids flowing from them. And I have plugged in. And I've got a green light on the converter. And I've got a converter on there too. Breakers, 12 volt breakers, and a couple of uh, other breakers. Just like an RV would have, a driver trailer. Uh, so. Let's see if lights work. A couple of light switches. Those are my 12 volt lights, so that tells me that the 12 volt system's still working. And now, somewhere, there they are. Those are my 120 volt lights. So I've got a couple of these LED lights that are plugged into shore power. So these are shore power lights that are working. So that tells me that everything is still in good shape. That's a good sign. All right, cool. No need to have them on, turn them off. And put all that stuff back away. <sighs> Feels nice to sit down here in a truck for a minute. It's not a cold right here in the truck. The heater's been going for a little bit, so I can take a little bit of a break from the outside temperatures and uh, enjoy that sunshine through the window um so the trailer's moved and uh time to put big blue away back in our warm garage and then i gotta come back out and move all that snow that i pulled out from in front of the trailer so it's not over yet it sure is nice to be warm in here
he's still covered in snow. Look at that. It's going to be a little bit before I get to her. Man, into the garage we go. I think we made it. All right, Big Blue, thank you for your workout today. I appreciate it. And uh, when it warms up a little bit, we'll get you outside for a longer run. All right. Take care, Big Blue. Big old diesel 3500 Ram truck. I don't like the cold weather. Mm -mm. So he's been, in, he's been inside for a bit. Oh. Well, while I've been out and about, um, I got an error on my phone telling me that something was up with our generator. So I came over here and dug out the generator. I saw the error code. I'll have to go research it. Like error 2600 or something like that. I'll have to go research that, see what it's all about. But I was able to reset it and uh, I'm running it for just a little bit just to exercise it. So that's a good thing. Nice and warmed up now. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in auto and ready to run. Perfect. Sounds good. I don't know what the deal is. Um, you know, there was quite a bit of snow around it. You can see how deep the snow is. It was pretty deep all the way around the whole enclosure. So I did my duty, cleaned her out, started it up, and runs seems to run fine. Gotta keep the gloves on. Whew, that's tough. Gotta press record, set the phone down, put gloves back on. Whew. And also out here, you know, we got the generator right over there, and then our oil tank right over here. So, shoot, while I'm here, thought to myself, with the reminder of my lovely wife, that I should dip the tank. So, I did. I had to dig out a little bit of a trench right there just to get into the tank. Get a six foot ladder and my uh, dipstick and go from the top measure down we've got about 135 gallons right now so it's getting time to get new oil we like to we don't like to go below 100 gallons so with this cold spell it's been uh going a little quicker oh there's that blue sky and that sun so low on the horizon still but just beautiful a little bit of frost left on the trees. What a great day. And cold. Whew. All right. Okay, well, back here at the uh, trailer, <clears throat> and uh, I've got the battery bay opened up, and I can see that it got pretty cold in here. Those batteries they got some frost on the outside of them. Um, but I'm going to measure the voltage right now just to see kind of where the charge is. And... Uh, Right now we're at 13.9, so they're not, I mean, they're maybe 80% charged, so with that, they can't really take a ver take much more than they've been exposed to, so. Yes, so it's definitely time to uh, put the charger on these batteries, get them freshened up and ready to get some oil. Uh, like I said, we've only, we've got 135 gallons left, so we've got a few days before it gets down to 100 gallons, and at that point we will be uh, ready to go get some oil. Batteries will be topped off and everything will be great, so. After doing a little bit of research, actually it didn't take me very long at all, I got an explanation of what error code 2800 might be. And I can see it's still erroring because there's that red light out here. So in my little bit of research, something told me that there might be a switch back here. This is the auxiliary switch. Well, it's in the... This switch is in the correct position right here. Flip it off and back on. Well, that one works. 
There might be another one inside the cabinet, too. And then that one. I shut down. Turn back on. And what's this telling me to do? Telling me to hit stop. Stop, arm, arrow code, push off, then enter, off, enter, off. Push auto to restart in automatic mode. Okay, back in auto. Well, ready to run. Okay. We'll see what happens. Maybe that'll do it. Hmm. I think that's what I did last time. Hmm. I just love the sun through the trees. Ah, it's so nice. Ah, How beautiful is that out here? How awesome is that? It doesn't get old. It almost looks foggy. I don't believe it is. I think it's just the, the tree branches are frosted and it's just blocking the sun a little bit. Sure is nice. All right. Made it back inside. This is just this workshop, so it's not toasty warm yet. It's 52 degrees or something like that in here. But that's sure a heck of a lot warmer than 15 below, isn't it? So kind of nice to sit down in here and warm up a little bit. It's a good day of work outside. It's, uh, it's tough to do tasks outside when it's so cold. Um, but there's some things you just have to get done. Uh, the generator. That is a... Um, emergency backup power for us. If we do lose power, the generator has to work. So I've got to figure out that issue. And I believe I did. I believe we've got that all reset and figured out. Um, heating oil, you know, that is uh, something we've got to maintain and, and uh, take care of as well. That is our main heat source and hot water. Um, so, you know, just because it's 15, 20 below outside doesn't mean you can just sit inside and do nothing all day. You do have to get out and and get into it and do it and that's just part of living up here that's part of what we chose to do in moving up here and you know like i said just a bit ago um it was a great choice i'm glad we did and you know cheers to that so yes it was good so i've got the uh heating oil trailer charging that should be fine like i think i, think I told you it was 12.4 uh volts on the batteries I got a trickle charger going on there, so in a couple days, be ready to go. The batteries will be nice and toasty warm and able to perform great. The trailer also does plug into the truck, so when we're driving down the highway, the truck does give it a trickle charge. I've got what's called an echo charger in there to, to charge the batteries while driving. <clears throat> um, so that helps. And uh, they, they should last long enough to pump the whole tank into the uh, my holding tank as well, so that's great. And as most of you know, I uh, recently had that knee injury. Um, I had my first day of physical therapy yesterday. Uh, the therapist was able to stretch and pull and show me some exercises to help uh, strengthen the knee. Not necessarily strengthen the knee, but help, uh, I, help me get more confidence in the knee. Um, with all the doings and, and out and about today, uh, I can feel it, you know, I can definitely tell that I was doing something, so uh, it's it's not 100% at all, that's for sure, and I do have to be very cautious when I am out, out and about doing stuff, especially on these uneven surfaces and the slippery snow and, and ice and such. So, even though you see me jumping off and on, well, you don't see me jumping off and off on the wheeler, but I sure was a lot today. Um, it's always in my mind that I need to make sure that foot's planted solid. Make sure the knee's stable before I take that next step. Um, but 
you know, it's getting there. It's doing a lot better than it was, that is for sure. Um, I'm actually getting around pretty good. Uh, and working around the house today was nice. It felt good to get back out there and really kind of do some stuff. So um, I think it's going to be a good thing for me. I mean, how can it be a good thing for me? Um, physical therapy is going to be good for me. Uh, it'll help me concentrate on, on using the knee the proper way and, and, and just kind of getting above or getting over the fear of, of hurting it again. Even though the meniscus is, a, is an injury, a, a torn meniscus is an injury that will not heal on its own, um, I think with this therapy, I will be able to get to a point where I can uh, walk on it pretty easily and not have too many problems and, and probably go about my normal activities here pretty soon um, without surgery. You know, that's my goal. I, you know, if I can avoid surgery, that'd be great. Um, and surgery really is the only way to truly 100% fix the issue. Um, so. You know, it's, it, it is an option, but if we can do this and get, get me to a point where I can trust my knee again and, and feel comfortable using it every day without surgery, that'd be great. So that's the goal. Um, until then, we're just going to take it easy and, you know, do uh, all in a day's work kind of thing and, and take, take a little sipper at night and have a good time.